All of a sudden, my wife starts screaming. She's like, look at this, look at this. And she shows me, he drops the album, with, and he's wearing the friggin', he's wearing the, jersey, yeah. the trasher jersey like this. We must have gained 30,000 followers overnight. Wow. Like, on Instagram and all Unreal. that stuff. And, dude, it was so crazy. I remember t- hitting him up. I'm like, dude, thank you. You didn't have to. And he posted it three times, actually, front, wow. back. And I was kind of taken back. I don't get starstruck, bro. And I wasn't starstruck, but I was kind of taken back. It was really like, him. Holy shit. So what do you great. say? So he just pops up, and I just remember literally saying, hey, Drake, how the f*** are you? You know, that's <laughs> literally what I said. And he started dying laughing. What's up, everybody? Talking Trash Podcast. We're here again. How you doing, Angie? We're back. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good now. Got a lot of... Uh, a lot of reaction from the first episode, man. I think a lot of people liked it. And uh, listen, it was uh, it was great to do it. We've got. I, I was a little shocked how many people watched the first episode and how much feedback we um, we received. And uh, how'd you feel about everything? It's good, man. I'm, it's it's fun. Like there's this is. I feel like what I should be doing. How's the season going? So so obviously we tape these episodes. Obviously this isn't like you know gonna drop tonight. How's the season been so far? It's been good, man. Just, I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's been a little bit rougher to start, start than we would like, but, um, you know, we're growing, and that's, you know, that's all that matters, you know. I feel like I feel like Danbury hockey teams, going back to the Trashers, always start a little slow. Yeah. And, that, and, that, and even with the Trashers, I remember the first, second year, you know, second year we made it to the finals. We didn't win, unfortunately, but we always were slow starters. And I think that's what's going on. Listen, you got to remember new personnel, lots of, you know, people don't understand behind the scenes, all the switches and stuff. So, you know, I I have all the faith you guys are going to repeat. Obviously, we're talking about the Danbury Hattricks, uh, FPHL. So if you're in Danbury, you got to check out the Hattricks, check out the boy Diamond Hands here. His hands are still looking clean so far, I think, you <laughs> know, little, it's little early in the season, but, uh, you know, I, I they, they're looking nice, man. Your diamond hands. You're going to be a hand model one day. They got a long way to go, but, uh, yeah, I don't know about hand model, but <laughs> <laughs> depends what they're looking for, <laughs> but, uh, we're getting there. Well, so. listen, let's jump right into it. You know, like I said, after our first episode dropped, we got so many direct messages, emails, et cetera, uh, you know, questions, you know, and I figured, you know, rather than. Rather than stretching it, let's let's get into what some people have been been asking for, and a, and a lot of people wanted to know. And this is kind of a question for both of us. I'll start with you. Is growing up, well, you know, where did Diamond Hands Daniel Amesbury grow up, and you know, what was it like, really? Yeah, so I'm from uh, Maple Ridge, BC. Um, it's a suburb of Vancouver, about 45 minutes or so from the big city and stuff, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I grew up, it's a pretty blue collar place. It's actually probably a lot like, you know, you're, you, where you grew up, you know, Danbury is kind of blue collar as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, really blue collar, pretty tough town. I went to like a really tough high school, Garibaldi Secondary, which was like a rugby school. So that was like, you rugby. know. Rugby. Rugby. That was our sport. Did so, you ever play rugby? Yeah, I played rugby. Yeah, I was a flanker. Oh my God. We have yeah. video of that? Uh, I don't know if there's video, but. Maple Ridge, if you're listening, anything from Diamond Hands, Daniel <laughs> Amesbury with rugby. I've always been infatuated with, not infatuated, but I've always been interested in rugby because, you know, you, you hear about it, Australia and all these other countries. I've never played. I've never really seen it. It looks, it looks intense. It looks like it's, something, it looks like a trasher sport. I feel from what I remember, like that was like our big high school sport from where I'm from. Like we didn't really have like, we didn't have high school football. We didn't have like, you know, a lot of high school sports weren't huge, but yeah. rugby, every team in my hometown had a rugby team or every school had a rugby team in my hometown. So rugby is good. My, I was a flanker. So my job was literally just tackle the scrum half, <laughs> which is scrum half's like one of the more skilled players. And I just chase them all game. It's on yeah, brand, that bro. Was like my, that was my job. So uh, you were an enforcer yeah, even as a much, rugby player. Pretty much just take out the best player. That seems, that, that seems like, listen, we're in a world, Amesy, we talked about this, you know, we're both very similar. We're both very old school and, you know, we're in a new age, 2023, almost 2024 in the world of content and viewers and all this other craziness. I mean, Content. I mean, can we get you on a semi-pro rugby team? That I would think be unreal. Yeah. 
semi listen <laughs> rugby universe i think it, there's enough there's <laughs> enough there's got to be enough teams out there like club teams whatever i don't know about pro or what levels there is or what but i'm sure there's uh i'm sure there's a rugby team out there listen rugby world I, listen my job is to always look after my guy and and uh i don't officially manage you but i'm gonna always look out any rugby teams out there we are looking to get in this off season maybe some daniel amesbury uh rugby games Let's i think go. That would be pretty. I didn't know you played I rugby. Yeah, See, I, I just learned I, I that. I actually really liked rugby. Yeah, it was fun. So. It, it fits you. Yeah, I mean, and that's honestly like watching rugby too. It's like one of those sports that it doesn't. I it just won't ever get soft. Like you know what I mean. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of ga- rule changes and like lacrosse and hockey and like things are kind of you know obviously the world's not as hard as it once was and and we're moving in a direction that's that but it's like. What the hell are you gonna do to soften up rugby? There's uh, nothing that you can. You like, wear helmets in rugby? Nah, I mean, you, some guys wear scrum caps, but like mostly no. I swear to Christ, I had no idea you played rugby, and now yeah. I'm interested. You See. wear a cup, like most guys wear a cup, and, yeah, and that would be it. I mean, that seems that it. seems like maybe a, a trasher rugby team one yes. day featuring yes. Daniel Ainsbury. Oh, like, uh, I would love that. Or like, just playing a game would be sweet. Yeah. Listen, rugby, I, <laughs> rugby doesn't get enough love. Let's bring rugby into the mix here. Yeah, Let's I talk think so. Trash Let's podcast. do it. I think so. actually, speaking of rugby in the mix, South Africa just won the World Cup. They beat New Zealand, and uh, I mean that's a pretty big deal. It just kind of happened. New Zealand is a big rugby. Uh, it rugby is. Place, yeah. Right? Well, we got Raddy on our team. He's from New Zealand, so we have a player on our team. Uh, and he's uh, he's from New Zealand, and uh, he was a little bit bummed out when he came in the one day. And what South position is Raddy? But what does he play? He's a forward. Yeah, he's a forward. So he's he's oh, good player man. Too. Yeah, I've heard New Zealand is heavy with rugby, so we'll see yeah. what happens. But listen, like we said, growing up, I mean, um, you know, a lot of people were like, when did you? And I think we touched on this the last episode. But when did you start playing hockey? And, and were you always like an enforcer? Were you always like that type of aggressive type player? Or did you have some skill? Or not that you don't have skill, but were you like, like, listen, <laughs> when I started playing hockey, right? Yeah. And again, never played up to your level. But I was like, I played in house, right? Yeah. In Brewster, New York, Brewster Ice Arena, before there was a Danbury Ice Arena. And I was like Eric Lindros at 12 years old. I was taller. <laughs> big. I was a big boy at 12. Yeah. And um, it was the worst thing that could have happened because I got a false sense of my skill level because I was out there. You know, you couldn't hit really back then. I was, I swear, I was. I had a hat trick almost every game. Just I was being big and strong. Just and guys great. bouncing off of me, and then it evens out. Yeah. You know, when you get into high school. They start to catch up. They start to catch up, and I realize, man, I really don't have that much skill. I just was lucky to have the, the size I did at the time. You matured early. And then I had to turn into a defenseman because I wasn't getting ice time as a forward my freshman year. And, and frankly, I sucked. And I'm like, <laughs> listen, if I want to play— if I want to get my my number called to play, I gotta yeah. I gotta change everything up. So yeah. I remember I got in the weight room a lot that summer, uh, going into my sophomore year. Um, I remember uh, just telling my coach, "Listen, I'll go because no one wants to play defense as a high school. Everyone yeah. wants to score. You know what I mean? You got the broads in the stands. You want to score? You know, wink." I was like, "You know what? I don't mind being the the, the guy. I want to keep the puck out of the net." Yeah. And uh, that was it. So. Were you always like I know right now you're playing defense with the hat tricks, yeah. and I know last year we were forward. You're very versatile, obviously, but as a kid, like what what was your position? What was your role really? Because yeah. you were playing high level hockey in Canada as opposed to me here yeah. in, in, in uh, <laughs> Connecticut. I mean, hockey's yeah, hockey's obviously you know really that's the sport in Canada for the most part, hockey and box lacrosse. But um, I grew up, I started young, um, but I always played D. Like defense was what I played all the way growing up. Never ever played a shift as a forward, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, I kind of played. Like I said, I grew up in a in a gritty town, and you know our hockey program was pretty gritty. You know, even in minor hockey, where obviously you're wearing cages, you're mm-hmm. not necessarily should be fighting and stuff. But we were one of the tougher programs, I'd say. Shout out to Ridge Meadows Hockey. We had a great program, still do. And, uh, you know, as we got older, um, you know, obviously, you know, 14, 15, 16, that you'd start to see fights every once in a while. And I remember we'd always play Chilliwack. Chilliwack was like... BC, I know Chilliwack. Chilliwack is a little farther out than us. So, yeah. like, that's even, like, they're the corn the cornfields and stuff like that, all the farm boys. Farm boys. Chilliwack, the kids were big, and they were tough. So I remember every time we played Chilliwack, it was a shit show. Big shout out to Chilliwack. Why I know Chilliwack, BC, during the Trasher days, okay, as you know, we had a, a player named John Nasty Morassi, legendary hockey minor league player. There was a guy on the Motor City Mechanics, His na- and, and this is my memory, Brandon Fleener. Okay. 
was a big <laughs> country boy from Chilliwack, BC. I remember looking at his hockey DB when I was a kid. I'm like, where the hell is? I thought it was Chilliwack, and I just used to think it was the funniest damn name. Brandon Fleener was a tough bastard. Didn't fight John Morassi in Danbury though. I gotta, I gotta use that against him. But was friendly with Wingfield, and we tried to get him that second Trasher season, but never happened. But. Just wanted to go off on a tangent about Chilliwack because you that oh, yeah. just brought. It's I'll a tough never forget place. That. A lot of big kids from there. So I yeah, that, I remember that was probably like our first real taste of blood when we were young. Like every time we played Chilliwack, guys were getting laid out. It was big hits, and every once in a while there'd be a fight. And like you back then, like you're you're not supposed to really fight, so you'd probably get suspended or whatever. But um, yeah, that was where I had my first fight. It was against Chilliwack. I remember like it was yesterday. It was in Pitt Meadows. Uh, blue rink for everybody that's from Ridge Meadows <laughs> or played hockey in Ridge Meadows. They know exactly where that is. And uh, it was in the uh, offensive or the deep, my zone, D zone, uh, right in front of the dressing rooms. Like I remember like it was yesterday and me and this kid got our, we both popped our helmets off. We had cages, obviously both of our helmets came off right away. Cause back then it's as soon as you start fighting, you got to rip his helmet off. That's yeah. like the number one thing. So I ripped his off. He ripped mine off. And I just remember we just went toe to toe. I had braces. Oh, I had shit. braces on and I, I, I can't remember if I was wearing a mouth guard or not, but I remember having braces and this guy punching me. And I, I remember coming into the dressing room after my mouth was full of blood because the braces tore up all my lips and, uh, and my dad had walked down the hallway or down like, you know, into the dressing rooms and I got in there. Obviously we got kicked out my, and my nose was broken. And then uh, my dad's sitting there adjusting my nose, fixing my nose. The parents are freaking out. It was it was great. Was your dad proud of you, or did he have to be a certain I, way in front of your mom? No, I think I think like that was probably the first time he really seen me actually fight. I'm sure you know, knowing who my dad is as a person, I'm sure there was a, you know, deep down inside he's probably like, <laughs> yeah, boy. You know, I think he's he's that guy. He he still is that guy. But I mean, um, yeah, first one probably like that. As I got a little bit older, I started doing it more. Mm. I think he was like, you know, when I was the captain of my team and I was fighting all the time, he's like, what are you doing? You need to be on the ice. <laughs> and uh, that's when he kind of got a little bummed out about it. Cause he's like, why are you fighting so much? I mentioned about your dad because, and I love your parents. We've met obviously. And um, I remember, again, I played high school hockey uh, here in Danbury, basically. I went to New Fairfield High School, shout out to Rebels. And uh, the Danbury Ice Arena wasn't in existence. It wasn't built until my sophomore year of high school. So we used to have to play in Brewster, New York, right over the New York border. And same thing, my sophomore year, my first year in Danbury, you know, playing at the Danbury Ice Arena, you know, Chris and it, it's kind of weird how things ended up with trashers and everything else. But same thing, I, I just love throwing my weight around, man. And, and same thing, you're not allowed to fight in high school hockey. Yeah, of course, and you get yeah. into a couple of scrums and I'll never forget getting kicked out. Not 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 the main rink. What's the side rink in Danbury called? Uh, Liberty, Liberty rink or Liberty? Yeah. I, we played in Liberty one okay. game because I guess Patriot was taken up. And I get into a fight with a kid, and um, I get kicked out. And I remember coming out and be like, "Oh shit!" My dad was at the game, and I I don't know. You know, my dad's is he funny. Get mad or he, is my he, dad's yeah. a funny guy because you never know. Yeah, it's the things that you think he's gonna get pissed at that he thinks is hilarious, and vice versa. Yeah. So I come out. He had that look on his face, and he had the greatest smile. I was remember being like, <laughs> I made him proud. You know oh, what I mean? And it was, it, it was. I mean, the fight didn't last long yeah. anyway. But uh, yeah, that's crazy. How and about it, how about both of our schools? Our team name was the Rebels. No oh, shit, you yeah. were the Rebels. Garibaldi Rebels. New Fairfield Rebels. Let's get it. <laughs> that's see, the connection keeps going, man. That's that's odd, man. Yeah. And it's funny we're talking about this because you know one of the biggest questions I was getting personally. Um, and we'll, we'll drop a link to our email. You guys have questions, comments, anything. Just, you know, obviously remember, like, and subscribe. But hit us with these questions and, and topics. But one thing I keep getting asked is, you know, A.J. Daniel Amesbury is one of the toughest guys in sports. And he's always dishing out punishment. What is the hardest you've ever been hit? Whether it was a fight, you know, pro, junior, whatever. Was it a fight? Was it a body check? People want to know, like they, they want to know the other side because we've all gotten our ass kicked before. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, you're on a run right now, but we, no one, no one retires undefeated in life. So people are like, where, what is the hardest or even better yet? Like who's the toughest guy you might've ever fought pro junior, whatever. If, 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 you know, you know it off the top of your head. Yeah. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I, I remember telling you this before when we talked about it, but like I. I wasn't always the toughest, you know, like you have to get to the point, you know, you have to work your way up the ladder and 
the only way is getting beat up. Yeah. I got beat up so many times, <laughs> like so many times <laughs> on the ice, off the ice, uh, you know, just you name it. But um, this, I mean, my first year, I think in the Central League, I was in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. I was the only guy, tough guy on the team, and it was during the NHL lockout. So everybody was coming down. Uh, there was a couple of NHL guys that couldn't play in the coast because they're on one-way contracts. Yeah. So they came to the Central League. I played against Alex Martinez right after he won a Stanley Cup. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I think Chip Chura was in the league. Um, but anyways, uh, uh, there was a couple guys in the league that year that were tough. And I was a kid. I was 22, I think, uh, fighting Aaron Bugard, Kip Brennan, oh, shit. Um, yeah. Eric Lizon. You know, these guys oh, were Lizon. big, strong. Um, i trying to think of who else. Uh uh, Colt King. Colt King was an animal. And honestly, like, I, for whatever reason, I always had something in the back of my mind about Colt King because he was just like a big, just a big, strong looking dude. And, and uh, he, you know, was he was always in the back of my head. Clots, too. Same thing. You know, that's the other thing is, is you know, I, I've always told you this. I don't have a skill. The one skill I have is I have a really good memory. And I remember the Trasher days, 04, 05, 06. I remember I had a binder. All guys I wanted to look into, and I always remember having that, you know, like a five subject, um, you know, school notebook. I'd have your skill guys, but tough guys was always, you know, top. And I always remember Eric Lizon. I remember yeah, he, he was Laredo. Was he Laredo? I might, he might have. Why been. do he, I remember that? I was there, but yeah, he might have been. He I was in Wichita to, when I was. I swear yeah. to God, I was working with an, you know, uh, an agent, and I remember him saying, "Listen, this kid Eric Lizon is going to going pro next year. You gotta, you know." Yeah. He was always. I just remember him being a big guy, tall, tall guy, yeah, six five, six. And six, I always maybe. remember that was a guy that I was going to. I never met him in my life. Yeah. And if he's listening, you know, you're a bad boy. He's, a, bad. he's good. I he, still he, stay in touch he, with him. He yeah. is a, um, he, I just remember getting like VHS on him too. Yeah. Just can go long arms and just, he oh, was yeah. tagging guys. So that's, that's funny. You guys cross paths. And, you know, that's the other thing. A lot of people, I feel like I'm always pumping your tires, but you're a larger than life type of guy, especially on the ice. You, you, you play like you're seven feet tall, but how tall, I mean, you're not, a, what, yeah, six foot, you're like six, six and, foot, yeah. and that's what people, I think that's a, a really underrated thing about you is when people watch, like I bring people to the hat trick games all the time and they're always looking for you. Where's 14? Where's diamond hands? And when you're out there, it's like, damn, it's like you're, you're, it's like you're Zidane Char out there. But yeah. the reality is, if you really want to be honest about it, especially with the history of hockey enforcers, tough guys, you're on the smaller end. Oh, yeah, big and, time. And you're yeah. always taking on, like, those big guys, and um, it's uh, – it, that that's cool. You you fought Lizon or did you fight Lizon? Or? I fought Lizon, oh, Lizon a couple times. Yeah, I had a pretty good one. My first fight against Lizon, I just remember it being actually here. This is a good story. So when I when I got to Tulsa, we were dead last, worst team in the league. <laughs> actually, shout out to everyone from that team in Tulsa though. Like had to be the funniest team I ever played on. <laughs> like actually, like comedy wise, Oklahoma. I think yeah, Tulsa, Oklahoma. I there had to be like four, or f a handful of guys that could have been stand up comedian. Gio Flaminio, like top <laughs> funniest guys I've ever played with. Uh, shout out to Kramer too. Kramer's hilarious, but um, uh, yeah, we were dead last, and I was like, I got called up pretty much. Like they're like, hey, at least if we're losing, maybe it'd be nice to have somebody that can at least fight, you know? So, so that I get there, and I, I think it was my first game in Wichita. Wichita had Lizon, Bugard, oh, Grunky, man. like they had like three or four heavyweights. And uh, I remember in warm-ups, I skate up to the center ice, lies on sitting there stretching, not even touching a puck, this guy. he just <laughs> sit at center, and he would just stare in our end during warm-ups. I, I literally don't even think he touched a puck. And I just skate up to him, and I was like, hey, are we going tonight? And he's just like, looks at me like, who the fuck are you? You know, like, what? Like, I don't even know who you are. You're not going to fight me, you know? He's thinking, I'm like, no, no, we're going to go. And he's kind of like a little bit confused, like, what the hell is this midget asking me to fight for? And then, uh, and then, so then we go into the dressing room and I remember now I'm, I'm at the point of no return. I already asked this guy yeah. to go and I'm like, now I'm starting to think the wheels are turning and I'm like, shit. All right. So I'm in the room and I remember the coach was talking and I'm kind of like panicking almost like I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I got to fight this monster. <laughs> and I'm like in my own head. And I just remember like spacing out a little bit and all of a sudden I hear the coach being like, Amesbury, you get that? And I look up, I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he's like, you get that? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I had no <laughs> idea what he said. And then after he's done talking, like, the guys on the team are like, you all right, man? You all right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Like, I'm good. I'm, but really, in my head, I'm just like, oh, my God, I got to fight this guy. L listen, again, I never played pro hockey, but I've been around it. And, and 
it, it's and we're gonna have to do a whole episode on, on on and part of this part of the beauty of this podcast is we wanna we wanna really bring attention to these enforcers guys like Eric Liza guys that you don't yeah. get the limelight these guys who are endangered species in this sport now and and uh, these guys are the greatest guys in the locker oh, yeah. room and why they're important for a team but you know it's just um. People don't realize, and I, I've been in boxing now 13 years, but people don't realize the psyche of a fight. Now, you now obviously, you know, hockey fights, a lot of it is organic. It happens organically. But, you know, the big guys, the tough guys like you, you know, people don't realize, like, there's pre-made challenges. And yeah. people don't know there's, like, pre-matches, right? And, and um, you got to answer the bell. And, and it's the anxiety, guys, I used to watch oh. it. I, to this day, with, with boxers and fighters in general, like, the anxiety— um, it's something that uh, not too many people could say, and it's just such a, it's such a crazy thing. Like, like you know, and I know you go through it. You know, even now when you have fights and things coming up, and it's funny because most of your fights this year so far, I'm telling you, I've seen people challenge you. It hasn't yeah. been the other way around, oh, yeah. and that's a funny thing. The funniest thing to me is, um, you know, your clips always seem to go viral. People are watching them. You know, you get your little haters here and there. We all do, but it's funny because. Truth to God, you don't really challenge too many people. And Not we're, really. we're going to be reviewing some fights on the next episode. And, and honestly, you, these guys are asking you, you want to go? And you're almost like looking at them like, okay. Yeah. And it's just, it's crazy to me, I think you know? twice, I feel like, I don't know, how many fights have I had this year too? I, I think both my fights, I don't know how many times I fought this year. It's, but I know for sure two times they were like, yeah. I got... Pretty much not jumped, but I was like kind of caught off guard. I'm like, this guy's asking me to go. Like it, every once in a while, I'll ask guys to go that I know aren't going to say yes just to kind of get in their head. But uh, yeah, man, all my fights. Well, that's this the year. thing is like you know you're 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 thirty. What are you thirty? Thirty two. You're thirty. You're 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 a, you're an OG in this game now. So it's like you're going. You're the Eric Lizon of this situation yeah. now. It's like yeah, guys asking you rather than you know you don't really need. And it's uh, it's so crazy to me like. Just how, how, and like I said, I always say, like, how smart you are as a fighter and, like, people are going to challenge you. I mean, even in this watered-down type of game, there's still some guys out there. And, and I give them credit because no, to step respect. up to you is, uh, is and we're going to review some of these guys. That, that poor kid you put a beating <laughs> on, uh, I got a lot of respect for that kid because he had to. He was in a, and we'll review that, but yeah. you'll understand why this kid was forced. You know, even though he challenged you, he was still forced to, like, be in that position, yeah, like, you know? I guarantee that guy got major respect from all of his teammates. He got he got major respect from me you know yeah. like I, I i have nothing but respect for someone else stand up for a teammate you know it's it's kind of makes you sick sometimes if, if that did happen and he kind of let let me get away with it because yeah. you know it kind of makes you sick seeing that so i'm yeah. just glad he stood up for his teammates and uh did the right thing we'll definitely review that one because that, that was and it's a breakdown because I, I i i will always stick up for the tough guy i will always stick up for hockey fights i you cannot take that aspect away from the game. I think we all kind of know where it's going down the line, but I am always going to be an advocate for it. And then explain why these things happen, because people just think it's like you guys are just doing it just for shits and giggles, yeah. and it's not that. So There's a lot of different reasons why it happens. Yeah. But well, we're definitely going to touch up on, on all that, which I'm, I'm looking forward to. Yeah, man. So, I mean, at the end of the day, like I said, it's, it's, uh, everybody took their beatings. To think about, like, one specific hit or one specific – um, fight that I got beat up. I, I don't even know, man. I got beat up so many times. <laughs> I got beat up on the street. I got beat up on the ice. I got beat up in lacrosse. Like, I remember, know. I remember in uh, playing high school hockey. The hardest I ever got hit. We were playing a team called Housatonic. I don't even really know where in Connecticut that is, but we we're playing a team called Housatonic. They had like St. Louis Blues colors. They were blue and yellow, and they had a kid. Uh, I, he looked like a beach boy. He had this long blonde hair. Just so out of place for where we are, and uh, he was a big boy. He was probably six three, six four. Don't even don't know his name. And uh, I remember going out, and I want to challenge myself too. In high school, you can't fight, but I'm yeah. like, I'm gonna try to, you know, go head to head with this kid. And he, he was a forward, and I remember I had to puck. I always had this move where I get to the red line, dump it, have my head down, give I someone the false head. sense, and then just. The I see head. him coming. Yeah, yeah, so I see him coming. I'm like, all right, let's see, let's see. Well. This kid hit me so, you know, when you get hit, you know, you automatically blink, right? You know, this kid hit me so hard. I flipped like, like, <laughs> like, dude, I didn't even blink. I just remember going all the way back and just end up on the ground looking at the ceiling. And we were in their barn, which sucked because they were all good. They all, yeah. all their fans got hyped. And I'm sitting there, <clears throat> took my breath away. I'll never forget that kid. I got to go back in the archive, see who this kid was. And because this kid, that's <laughs> the hardest in hockey 
you know, body check wise, I was ever hit. I'll never forget it. Just looking at the lights, like, holy shit, what just happened? Well, the hardest collision that I ever had. I mean, I was on the giving end of this when I hit Yates last season mm. at Center Ice. I don't know. We'll, we'll probably probably review oh, that yeah. at some point because I was the biggest hit of my career. But that was like literally the hardest collision mm. I've ever been in. Like a, I l- immediately was seeing white. It was a car I wreck. Felt, I felt like I got in a car accident. It sounded like it too. I was there, yeah. and I just remember like, oh my god, you know, because. You always know, like I always tell people, you always know the sound of a good pass, the way the puck yeah. hits. The same thing with same thing with um with with collisions and hits is you just the equipment makes a different type oh. of sound and uh, it's just yeah. carnage, bro. Dude, yeah, I, I remember. So after I hit, yeah, like it was literally, like I said, biggest collision I ever had. I'm seeing white, like you know, when you get rocked. It's happened to me a lot of times in a fight where a guy will hit you and you'll see white. And then he'll hit you again and your vision's back. You're yeah. Like, All right, I'm, I'm Thank back you. in the game. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm back <laughs> in the game. But uh, this time it was I hit him and then the white like came and I was like, oh my God, I'm still standing. And then all of a sudden I get a tap and it was uh, their captain for some reason, his name's spacing, my, spacing out. Oh, right the now. kid from. Um, from Bingo. Oh, the defenseman. What's his name? I, I like Schultz. that kid. Schultz. Schultz. Yeah, Jake yeah, Schultz. Super good kid. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, he taps me on the pads. The like, games we got to go. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, probably shouldn't be fighting right now because I just got rocked. <laughs> Well, I, did, I rocked a guy, but yeah. it rocked me. So then I'm, and then I, I Jake fought. Schultz, tough kid. He's yeah. in the East Coast now, I He's think. He's in the East Coast. Yeah. Like so him. he should be, yeah. So like him. Good so kid. Tough, be. tough kid, man. Yeah. How many times you're breaking, you're broken your nose, you think? Uh, I think seven right now. Is that Push it in. Show the camera, because you've shown me this. You look like a, oh. <laughs> is that a good angle? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Production, so get a zoom in on that. Seven times. It's seven like a magic, times, it's like yeah. a magic it's like trick. Jello. The kids love it, though. Kids love the pl- uh, this joke, they think it's hilarious. It turns my stomach. But uh, I got my yeah, I've got <laughs> a new handful of surgeries. So one time, this is a funny story. One time, I was getting my 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 nose fixed, mm-hmm. and my mom was taking me to the hospital. And this was my nose got broken, and I think it was like four or five or six days later, I had to go get my nose fixed. Shout out to Canadian Healthcare for making me wait that long. <laughs> um, and I end up getting in, finally get into the doctor. And I get in there and now my nose has been healing for days. So it's like, it's going to hurt. They got to re-break uh. it, right? And this wasn't like a surgery they're putting me under for. <laughs> yeah, this is rough. So I get I in a there. weak stomach. Yeah, so the, the doctor gets in there. I'm with my mom, okay? I get in there and I'm like, dude, this is going to suck. Like no pain. I think they might have given me a couple needles in my nose, like four needles uh. in my nose on the inside of my nose. God okay? damn it. Yeah, and then... Uh, they pin me, I, they lay me down on this chair, on this bed, right? Wait, how old were you? Sorry. S- probably 16 or 17, oh. maybe. 17, probably. So they lay me down on this bed, and a, a male nurse or whatever, the doctor's assistant's helping him, pins my head down. Oh. Pins my head down. So he's got all his body weight on my forehead. He's like, okay, you're going to stay here. I'm laying <laughs> on my back. And the doctor takes it like it, what looks like the back end of the handle of a fork. And he sticks it up the inside uh, of my nose. My nose is broken right at the top. Sticks it right up, all the way up like this. <laughs> and he puts his thumb on the outside of my nose no, right no, here no. like this. And he starts yanking on it like this. And you can see his arms straight. And he's trying to, <clears throat> and he pulls it a few times. And I'm, dude, this is this hurts. And he yanks on it a couple times. Yanks on it. And finally, he puts his foot. <laughs> chill, he puts his chill, foot, dude. chill, chill. He puts. We got a garbage foot. can in here. <laughs> <laughs> he puts his chill. foot. We're gonna get some raw content in a minute. And he yanks it, <laughs> and I hear a little pop, and I'm like, "Okay, he got it. Thank you." He, it, it hurt so bad. I'm like, "Oh my nose starts bleeding." So now they go, "Okay, okay, you're good. You're good. Go into the bathroom. Make sure your nose oh. is straight." <laughs> so I walk over. My nose is bleeding. I walk over to the bathroom and I look into the mirror, and my nose is like mostly straight. <laughs> And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, that's good. You know, like, that's for sure good. We're fine. Like, it's a much straighter than it was. I appreciate. Like, it was hooked, Ugh. dude. So they actually pulled it out a little bit, but not all the way, but it was good, right? So then I go to the, I come out and they're like, oh, how's it look? And I was like, it's good. Yeah, we're good here. Oh. We're good here. And my mom's like, we're not fucking good. Get back on the table. <laughs> and I'm like, mom, it's fine. She's like, no, it's not straight. And so, yeah, they put me back down. And the second time was much worse than the, than the first but uh, shout out to my mom. She probably really enjoyed that because she made me get back down and I really didn't want to. And uh, But the doctor straightened it. And honestly, my nose is pretty straight. I've had it broken seven times. Almost got broke again the other night. Uh, but hey, I've uh, let the doctors take care of your nose. My dad's fixed it. My dad straightened it one time for me. My dad set my nose once. I set my nose myself once. And then I've had doctors set my nose probably a handful of times as well. So. 
it's a nice looking nose. You're I mean, still all you right. Just I mean, take I care of it. If your nose gets broken, just fix it. You know, just stick a fork up there and get your buddy oh, to yank on it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna yeah. need a garbage can for segments in here. I have a yeah. feeling, man. I get, I get a queasy stomach, man. That's that's. Uh, <laughs> Oh my God, man! So what? What about you? Like, I know we talked about like a little bit of my me growing up and where I came from. Like, obviously, you grew up in Danbury. So, what was it like growing up in Danbury and playing hockey out here and stuff like that? And well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this because I always say I'm from Danbury because I am from Danbury. But there's always these technicality people out there. I technically grew up on the New Fairfield border. Okay. So New Fairfield. Listen, Danbury to me is if you say you're from Danbury, you're Danbury, New Fairfield, Bethel, yeah. Brookfield. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like saying you're from New York City. You know? Yeah. So. You know, same thing. I mean, it was, uh, like you said, Danbury's a blue-collar city. Um, you know, my, 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 my father was, you know, had a million garbage companies. So, you know, most of my most of my youth, most of my life was spent with him, basically. You know, it was, it was weird. I always felt like my life, I always felt like I, um, I always felt like my year was two different years. I'd have, obviously, school growing up. You, you know, from five years old, you'd have school. And then the summer came, and I was, you know, on White Street. I was yeah. at my dad's yard most of the time. And, um, you know, listen, I had a childhood. I had friends and stuff like that. But I, I really kind of grew up fast. Now that I look back, I, I definitely grew up faster than most. And, and I was always around my dad and guys. You know, I was always the, I was always the kid. I was always the young one. And, um you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, there's stories for days about that, obviously, but, um, would you say that that matured you quicker just because you were around the yeah. older guys and stuff then? Oh yeah. Listen, my time on, and I say white street, that's in Danbury. I my time on white street. Like when you pulled into my dad's yard, it's, uh, it was like going into a whole nother city. You know, there was eight different big warehouse buildings and, and, and truck there were, you know, he had what, I don't even a hundred trucks probably. I mean, crazy. Just, it was like you were going into a whole nother sector of town. You know what I mean? And, uh, white street had its own rules. You know what I mean? And my dad was kind of the emperor over there. And, uh, <laughs> he, uh, you know, it was, it was definitely, I think, you know, I grew up, you know, uh, you, you learn about diversity, bro. I mean, there was every type of nationality at the garbage yard. I mean, you're dealing with everybody and, and you learned a lot. You learned, you know, it was very humbling. You know, it was, it was, I, I learned a lot. A lot of my life lessons, you know, come from White Street. And, and uh, coincidentally, shout out to Mobile on White Street where we get our C4s. Oh, yeah. That's the second plug. Sponsored by we, Talking that, Trash Podcast. Listen, we pay the mortgage at Mobile that's on our White Street. That's the second free plug for C4. But, yeah. you know, it's funny. Every time I go to Mobile in the morning, get C4 it's right across from where my dad's yard was and it's just like if people only knew what we used to go on behind those gates I mean it was just oh, a yeah. whole nother world you know good bad and indifferent you when know I, I, when I drive past it like sometimes I just because I remember I didn't know originally that that was the yard but when I drive past it sometimes I'm like I think like the wheels turn in my head I'm like I could only imagine you know the funny thing is you know the media has gone off and and, and you know we kind of labeled my dad or labeled my family a certain way but there were some funny ass times in there too. I mean, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on getting my dad in here, and we we have to yeah, have we a seg have to. we we have to we have to work a segment called the um, you know the the the, the so much stuff, man. The, the some of the funniest times of my life were in there, and some of the craziest times <laughs> of my life were all in the you know the paint shop. We have to have a segment called the paint shop. The paint shop was directly below where my dad's offices was, and. The paint shop was either the funniest place in the world to be in or the scariest place to be really? in the world, depending on what was going on. And, and it was uh, it was good times, man. But, you know, growing up, like like I said, uh, you know, the Mighty Ducks got me into hockey. You know what I mean? We, yeah. we, Danbury wasn't a hockey. Dude, in 92, 93, whenever that movie came out, is I fell in love with hockey immediately. I was like, I got it. I don't know how, but I got to get into hockey and, um, you know, started playing and, and, and uh you know, wrestling obviously was, you know, my first love. It's it's still, I watch it three, four times a week. My my wife, Kim, loves that, by the way. <laughs> but, you know, wrestling, I mean, you know. What about was, your son doing the wrestling moves now? Oh, yeah, we're going <laughs> to. I think him and Wes, I think my son showed him a, a new move. Now he's doing a hundred percent. You know, we had to move everything from his playpen because he's, <laughs> he's, it's like he's climbing the hell in a cell in WWE and yeah. jumping off. And off it's like, ropes. it's, it's too funny, man. Um. You know, but yeah, I mean, wrestling, hockey, I mean, it's, it's, you know, boxing, it's all like, everything's been like kind of intertwined right now. It's, it's, it's just absolutely, uh, 
it's crazy. But, you know, my childhood, man, listen, I mean, there was a lot of good, a lot of, we all, you know, I think everyone's childhood, I don't care where you're from, what your circumstances are, there's good, there's tough times, good times. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just, but I definitely, listen, I'm 37 going on 85. I definitely feel older than yeah. my age. And I think a lot of that's just from experiences and, and, and things like that, you know? So one of the things that, I mean, I know we've talked about, you know, we've both talked about our backgrounds and stuff like in here and, at, you know, outside of here or whatever. But one of the things that I know from my experience and that I've learned over the times, and I think I've maybe mentioned this to you before because I've heard I had people on the podcast talk about stuff. And I remember hearing somebody say something about privilege and how yeah. you grew up with money. So you have privilege, not sure. saying you, but that's where I had heard somebody say in a podcast one time. And to me, I know from life's experiences that it doesn't matter where you come from or what sort of money you have, good or bad, you, the road is the road yeah. and, and the negative, like it doesn't matter. Yeah. You might, you might have money and you might have this, but what about all the challenges? Can we, can I ask you about the challenges Dude, you, that you had being, you know, coming, obviously your dad was fairly well off, your family was fairly well off. So what about like, that must've been really hard going to school sometimes. Cause like for me, what I'm thinking is like, do you even know if these friends are really trying yeah. to be your friends or are they just trying to be around you because you had money? And, I, and and just that challenge alone makes me think like, well, I'm glad I wasn't in that situation because that would have been really difficult. Of course. I mean, listen, you know, again, I'm 37 and I've had a lot of life experience and, and that to me, and I, I tell people, that to me was the biggest obstacle I had to overcome was, you know, grew, I grew up, like I said, five years old, I'm at the garbage yard. You know, I'm yeah. dealing with a lot of blue collar guys, guys from all walks of life. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I, I know I've known, I've, I've known people all, all types of walks of life. Right. So, you know, first of all, the one thing the documentary screwed me on is, you know, people think we're, you know, my dad had billions of dollars. He didn't, you know mm. what I mean? He had, you know, he did very well. I never missed a meal. The lights never went off. You know what I mean? Like we, we, you know, but I think because my dad was a little flashy, it always, you know, you know, mm -hmm. it, it always seems bigger than it was. Yeah. But that being said, I mean, listen, we, we had, we had a lot growing up. We, we, you know, more than some, you know what I mean? And, and it, but as a man, you know, and, and you know this, we've talked about stuff like this. Like as a man, I think. You know, even as a young boy, you know, you're growing into becoming a man, like respect is a huge thing. And gaining respect to me is always the biggest thing. You know, I don't care how much money you have. I don't care. You know, if, if you gain the respect from people, that's what it's all about. And I always felt behind the eight ball with that because, like you said, you're a target as a young kid. Oh, you're, you're you know, rich boy. uh, you got this, you got that. And you feel, I was embarrassed, yeah. you know, I was embarrassed because I'm like, damn, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I know I'm not a spoiled kid. I hate the word spoiled. To me, spoiled is spoiled milk, spoiled food. I was very fortunate. Yeah. But as I got older, I, and, you know, I, it comes with wisdom and age and, and I'm like, you know what? I, I should have never been embarrassed because you know what? Don't judge someone based on what they're given. Judge what yeah. they do with it. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. listen, I was given a lot of opportunity and things that I didn't earn or deserve. But that, to me, was a challenge to prove, yeah, my dad made the right choice of giving me yeah. this opportunity. Because you give a lot of people opportunity, they're going to blow it. Yeah. You could give someone a million dollars, you know, today, <clears throat> it's gone by tomorrow. You know yeah. that. I oh, mean, of course, yeah. So I never, you know, I never— um, you know, but it was a big thing for me, bro. Like growing up, I, I never wanted to, I, I never wanted to, I didn't want people to think that I thought I was better because I, I didn't, I, yeah. I, I legitimately did. And that's why I think I was, um, part of it, it's my blood, but that's why I always felt I was always a little aggressive growing up yeah. playing sports. I, I feel like I always had, I, to this day, like something to prove a little always, chip on your shoulder, bro. Yeah. I have so many chips on my shoulder and, and a lot of it's self inflicted, but when you grow up that way and people kind of, and you're right, it's like, is this really my friend or is this? Yeah, like that, that's the one thing I thought of because I, you know, I was trying to put myself in like, in that mind, in that state. And I was thinking like, you know, I didn't, like when I went to school, I never had, to, that wasn't even a, like I didn't have all the stuff yeah. at my house and like, and I'm grateful for that. You know what I mean? I'm actually grateful for that. You know what I mean? But because I thought of the other side of it, it's like, man, I could only imagine being the one that maybe had, 
the newest thing. And then it was like, is this guy even, that's a whole new set of challenges. And the thing is that will create growth just yep. as much as the growth that comes from not having those things in the first place. And, and, and that's what it is, is, you know, my dad, even my mom too, my parents came from nothing. So, you know, there's a certain challenge, right? When, when you come from dirt to make something of yourself, yes. that takes a special, you have something inside of you. Now, I didn't grow up from dirt. Mm -hmm. So there's certain DNAs there that I don't have because, you know, listen, but listen, I'm still the son of my father. I, I, I'm still a wolf in my own ways. And mm -hmm. I always, you know, I'm just a more domesticated wolf, yes, right? Like yeah. my dad's coming from the jungle. You know, I'm coming from a zoo, yeah, but yeah. you still don't want to poke the zoo sometimes. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? but, but, but the point I'm trying to make is, you know, I was very, at a very young age, I was very observant and self-aware of what I had compared to maybe some others. And um, you're right, man. It's like, it doesn't matter. When you when you become a man, it's like, all that means nothing. You know yeah. what I mean? What are you doing now? You know yeah. what I mean? And, and I've always felt... Um, I've always, to this day, and you know me, yeah, I get myself wired up sometimes. I always got something to prove. I always have to show people, you know what, I've, I've gotten some lucky breaks here and there, but lucky breaks only get you so far. It's like, you know, you could get, you know, I may have a key to a room, but what you do in that room is what really defines you as a man. And, um, you know, here we are. And, yeah. and listen, real recognize is real. Like, you know, I, I, like I said, I got friends all walks of life, tough guys, lawyers, blue collar, white collar. And listen, if people know you're full of shit, it doesn't matter. They're going to see right through you. I mean, um, I get along with mostly everybody. Um, I adapt to any situation. And, um, you know, that's really it. And that's how my dad, uh, that's how I was raised by my family. You yeah, know? I mean, I mean, for me, like, you know, we've been friends for, you know, not the longest time. Feels like longer, I feel yeah. like. But um, but you're a super humble guy. And, like, you're, you know, you're really, and you're, honestly, you're the hardest worker out of anybody that I know every day like well, you are grinding that. every single day you have to and you know like i actually you know every time i come where do i i come hang out at the gym that's yeah. what i do i come distract aj when aj's <laughs> trying to get shit done i come in distract I him for that, an though. hour to give him a little bit of a break you need unexpectedly that. probably catch him, off, catch him off guard when he's most productive <laughs> no you need that i need that though because i won't like you said i won't stop yeah. and you're the same way and, yeah. and that's how it was like i saw my dad my dad same thing you, you know you were I just, you try to find the balance because it can't all be about work, but when you create something yourself, that's your baby, right? Like, you, there's no off, you know yeah. what I mean? A lot of people, oh, you have your own business, that's great. No, it sucks. It's a grind. It sucks, yeah. man. Like, I tell you all the time at the gym, like, what keeps me going in boxing, bro, is, let's say every month is 30 days. Like, there's 29 shit days, but that one good day where yeah. everything's clicking just renews me for the yeah. next month because yeah. uh, it's it's a grind and i've always found myself in professions where it's not the easiest it's it's uh gritty and and i just think it's just um it, it's controlled chaos bro that's always that was my wrestling name when i used to controlled do back chaos? no chaos oh, with a chaos, k nice i like it and it's funny because i don't know what made me call myself chaos as like a 12 year old doing backyard wrestling but I think we should both do some backyard. I think we should start our own I, backyard wrestling. I am all for wrestling. Um, as you know, I, I am quasi part of WWE NXT. WWE NXT. A shout out to Tony D'Angelo, Stax Lorenzo. Those are my guys. And um, it's been my, like, wrestling is my life, bro. Yeah. I love wrestling, dude. Every, a lot of stuff I've done from Trashers. Even boxing, so everything like somehow relates to we wrestling. Gotta, it's super weird. I kind of want you to smash me through a table. <laughs> can we do that? Can we make that content? Listen, we can like, do I whatever. Want you coming off the top row. Listen, we can do out. whatever. All right, we're doing. I, it. I, I had growing so when we, you know, shout out to all the new Fairfield boys, man. HTV, Hardcore Television, that was our backyard wrestling. Okay. HTV, dude, it couldn't have been more serious for me. Like we had production <laughs> meetings at lunch at school. That's unreal. And we had a, uh, the only eight people that watched this was the eight of us. We had That's four good guys, <laughs> four bad guys. And I was a bad guy, naturally, chaos yeah, with a weird, K. Weird. K A O S, chaos. And, uh, dude, I had like three moves. The rest, we, you know, we used to do it at my buddy Mike's house when his mom was at work or away. We used, instead of chairs, we'd use, you know, cookie sheets. They were aluminum, they were light, but they made that big noise. And instead of, tables we had boxes we would take boxes from my dad's yard the recycling i would be we'd be taking brand new boxes power bombing people through them hitting each other with the cookie sheets 
Ideal. Ruined this kid Mike's sister's. Um, we had she had a play set outside, you know, with a slide. Just we trash were, it, dude. At, <laughs> poor, <laughs> poor girl, yeah. dude. That was it. Was the best man wrestling. I, wrestling in our some, day was oh, the yeah. best. Those oh. mid to late nineties, the yeah. Attitude Era was. Is that what they call it? The Attitude the Era. The Attitude Era, yeah. bro. That that so it was like Stone Cold, The Rock, the Rock and stuff. Undertaker. That was my. That was like when I watched wrestling. Like we were, you know, we'd go to have sleepovers yeah. and we'd watch wrestling, and it was like. Stone Cold, The Rock, Undertaker, Kane, you know, like it was Mick the, Foley was still around. It, it, you was, know? it was like the soundtrack to my life, dude. Oh, yeah. it's, it's like I could, like it was everything. And and it's funny because my mom, we tried to wrestle at my house and my mom would come yell at us. I'd get in trouble. So Mike's, you know, we figured we had a, we, we caught a glitch because his father would come home at a certain time and his mom would go to work. So we like, we had the house. Oh, nice. You had like a little. We had a, we had a whole HTV arena, which was the outside basically. And it was hardcore, man. We bought, I remember we all chipped in and bought. And you got to remember, this is what, the year 19, this is the year 2000, 2001, when like the internet was new. I'll never forget when we got our first custom belt. It, it, and I still have it. I'm the only two-time HTV champion, by the way. Congrats. We would take, Congrats. thank you. Yeah. And I take that serious. And I know the belt is somewhere and I will find it. And it's going to be in this set now that I we, think about it. You know it. what? Yes, yes. I, th dude, nowadays you get everything like this, Amazon, yeah. custom this. But, dude, we found a site that made custom wrestling belts. And when we got that in the mail, it was one of the greatest days the of my Holy life. Grail. And Holy and Holy uh, Grail. Uh, God, man, it was it was and I got tape of it. It was it was fun. We used to. There's actually so like I went through a phase with my buddies in high school where we would just watch crazy backyard wrestling videos Dude. like the gnarly. Like, I'm talking like some stuff I put like some grimy shit. Yeah. But I was just thinking like maybe we do that one well, one segment. We'll just have to pull up some crazy backyard wrestling moves. Dude, I can I them. will storyboard everything. <laughs> I can name I already, everyone. I, I can name everyone on HTV. I already Chaos, have a video in my head right now. Clash, Prodigy, Big Truck. There was a guy named Big, Big Truck. Truck. That's legit. Butch Titan. Nice. Kid named Dane. His name was Danger. That was a. Uh, I mean, dude, T Bone. We had everything. T Bone, funny by the yeah, way. I was gonna uh, say it's the same T Bone. No, no, no. <laughs> if he was backyard wrestling with us, that would have been. I feel weird. like he'd be a pretty crazy wrestler. I think yeah. so. Yeah. I know, but man, it was like uh, it was it was the greatest times of my life, man. That's we, awesome. we 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 would uh, fun times, bro. Good times, yeah. So and like, wrestling is real. I don't care what anyone says. Wrestling is real. It's all real. All the storylines are real. Um, I was recently, you know, last year I was kidnapped in NXT. Yeah, Shout that, out yeah. to Tony D'Angelo and Stax Lorenzo got me out. We had a feud with, um, you know, Santos Escobar. So it's just real. I take it very it's serious, real. man. I'm glad I'm here. Dude, that's, yeah, you're good now. <laughs> so so uh, when I remember when I first came to Danbury, like, I, and it's crazy. Like, it, it honestly really wasn't that long ago. It was about a year nah, ago. Yeah. A little over a year, maybe. And, uh, you know, like, I, I remember my first time in the gym. I remember coming in, walking in, be like, eh, this is champs. Like, I didn't even think this would ever happen. And then, you know, I think you're in your office. Your office is like, that's your spot. Yeah. You know, like, you got your little, like, spot and you come out, you know, you come out, poke your head over out every once in a while, and then you go back in. Like, that's your spot. You spend lots of time there. You're grinding, right? And I, you know, I started coming into the office and I remember I sat in there with you and I'm looking behind me and where you sit when you're in AJ's office, you're kind of facing him and on your back, there's a big piece of broken glass. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> what's up with this broken glass, AJ? Like, tell me the story. So why don't you share with, uh, the, with the fans, this, uh, this the, broken glass that you had in the, your office until what? A couple uh, weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, like it's still there. It's still it's there. Just, yeah, it's, it's just it's gonna it's go. It's just being reno right I'm now, right so it got pay, taken down. Yeah, but it'll so, probably go back up. Oh, it's definitely going yeah. back up because, yeah. uh, as you know, as we know, you know, the Netflix documentary Trash just came out. It was August thirty first, two thousand and twenty one. That next day is when you know I, I get a follow from uh, Mr. Drake, and you know, it's, I didn't even know he. So you know. The documentary comes out was a Tuesday. You know, the shit hit the fan. We started getting crazy follow. You know, it just, we, I, no one expected it to kind of blow the way it did. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, it's funny, I'm direct messaging with a guy. And I've told this story a million times. And it's just like, it's just still to this day a funny story. Like, this guy DM'd me looking for a jersey. We didn't have jerseys, blah, blah, blah. He goes, hey, it's kind of cool. Uh, Drake followed you. And I'm like, Drake followed me. And I look, and sure enough, he he follows champs too, which really? is funny. Cool. He, so I look, and I'm sure shit, champagne poppy, there he is. I'm like, what the hell? So I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm playing it cool. First of all, I'll be very honest. I've always was in the middle with Drake. I wasn't a huge fan, but I didn't dislike him. I like, yeah. you know, he's, you know, yeah. he's cool. 
you know, I'm again, I'm in my 30s. I'm not, yeah. you know. But is he the biggest Canadian artist right now? He's for probably sure. the biggest yeah. artist in, in general. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? He's... But again, you know, like, um, anyway, long story short, I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, cool. So an hour goes by, and I'm like, there's no way this guy followed me and doesn't expect me to reach out. You know what I mean? It was kind of an interesting move. Like, he didn't follow yeah. me and then hit me up. You know what yeah. I mean? So I'm like, screw it. I, I don't yeah. care. I don't play that pride stuff. So I text, I, I DM him. Yeah, yeah. And all I wrote was, hey, thanks for the follow, dash AJ. You know what I mean? Now I'm not expecting this guy to see it. Dude, almost instantaneously, I must have just caught him. He, he hit me back. I just watched the documentary. I love it. And he had that album, Certified Lover Boy, coming out later that week. Oh, I loved it. He said something along the lines was, it inspired me to finish my album. That's a direct crazy. quote. Wow. And I was like, you know, wow, that's crazy. You know what I mean? This guy is, you know, biggest one of the biggest guys in the, one of the most recognizable names and faces in the that's world. That's insane, yeah. So, uh, you know, he, <laughs> you'll like this, because he's like, hey, can you know, I need a jersey. And I'm thinking to myself, shit, you know, we don't have jerseys. You know what I mean? And he's like, you know, I'm like, God damn. So he goes, uh, let me FaceTime you. And as you know, I I, I don't have FaceTime capabilities because I don't have an iPhone. <laughs> shout out to Samsung. Hey, shout out Against to the, the grain. Yeah. Look at this phone, everybody. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, that's right. You were, I, so, I, I, came, I, went, I joined the cult again <laughs> just recently. I just switched from Samsung to iPhone again. It's all right. Samsung's yeah. going to sponsor us at some point. Yeah. Droid, droid till I die, buddy. Yeah. So anyway, he I felt embarrassed telling this guy, Drake, yeah, I don't have an iPhone. You know, uh, Do you have WhatsApp? I said to him. Yeah, He's like, yeah. yeah, yeah, I got WhatsApp. So we video chatted. And that's the other thing, iPhone. You're not the only ones that can do video chat, yeah, yeah, all right? There's WhatsApp. Who gives a shit? I agree. Uh, so I, that's a whole segment. Yeah. I fight my whole family against that, iPhone. You know what? That's, we know exactly what segment yeah. that's going to go on. Yeah, oh, yeah. You can have two minutes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm jotting that down. that down. You yeah. know what? Because I'm tired of being discriminated against yeah. over my blue bubble. Hey, I, I rode green that wave text. with you for a long time. I was yeah. even here. I had my Samsung here. I just switched back to iPhone Dude. and I feel like I'm a sellout. I kind of, I'm kind of, nah, I joined iPhone, the cult like, again. Like we're the bad boys. The Samsung is like yeah. the bad boys of I, uh, friggin' yeah, I, smartphones. I I'm agree. tired of it. Hey, my my should, wife is so stuck up, Kim. I love you, but oh, you know, all the people in my life, Manny, Amanda, everyone, oh, you do. The green bubble. The green bubble. The green gives bubble. A shit. Can you read what I wrote? So my whole team had Can to you have, read what I wrote? <laughs> Who gives a shit the my bubble? My whole team last year, they would always grab me because we had to have a chat uh, app because everybody on the team had an iPhone except for me. So they had to have a chat app. Well, so what was, bubbles do you guys you have? Know, well, everybody's got iPhones now because yeah. They, well, what's they the bubble? You got bubble. I keep thinking about hey, that's well, all I hear. Well, the thing is, that kind of pisses me off is I switched over to iPhone, like trying to be a good team guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, switch over to the iPhone, and uh, we're still not using iMessage for our group chat. We're still using listen, an app, so I could have had my Samsung anyway. I don't know how many people are what watching this right now. I'm sick of the iPhone stuff. Yeah. All right, we're just as important as you. Yeah. Okay. And honestly, Samsung's kind of better. Like I like Dude, the Samsung. But better. everyone in my world, Hot take maybe. Everyone maybe. in my life has an iPhone. That's fine. Who gives a shit? Yeah, yeah. Everyone. Oh, you're ruining our group chat. The bubbles. Shove your bubble up your ass. Yeah. I don't care about I your agree. bubbles. I don't <laughs> I, care about your little stupid games. I'm 37. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can yeah. you hear? I don't give. Hey, and better yet, you can slam your phone shut on somebody. Dude. You know what I mean? This How good is that? Everybody Galaxy misses Z that. Fold, it's the old days. When you get everybody pissed, you see. That. Yeah, so. Yeah, everybody misses we'll, that. We'll, we'll, we'll do two in a box on that whole yeah, thing. But anyway, yeah. so getting back to Drake, I, I was like, listen, you know, I got WhatsApp. So he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll, you know. Now I'm thinking maybe I'm, you know me, like I'm like, is this guy spamming? Like, this is really Drake or is yeah, I'm getting is messed around? He's like, nah, it's really me. And, I, and, I'm, and you see my DM, I'm like, yo, is this really you? He's like, yeah, yeah, call him. I call him and, and sure enough, his face pop, pops up. And I was kind of taken back. I don't get starstruck, bro. And I wasn't starstruck, but I was kind of taken back. It was really like, him. Holy shit. So I, what do you great. say? So he just pops up, and I just remember literally saying, hey, Drake, how the fuck are you? You know, that's <laughs> literally what I said. And he started dying laughing. And uh, we're talking, and dude, what a humble guy. Seriously. Yeah, awesome. And, and, he's, and you can see he's in the studio, and, and it was kind of hard to hear at first. And he's like, man, I'm going to Houston in two days. I'm dropping this album. I really would love a jersey. And I'm yesing him, and I have no jersey. Yeah. I have no jerseys to sell. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got yeah. you, I got you. We'll yeah, 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 let's figure it out. And um, I hang up with him. We talked for like 15 minutes, and he was legitimately asking me questions about cool. the doc. He's like, oh, this was cool, this and that. Really good guy. Shout out uh, Drizzy Drake there. Yeah, shout out, but, um So then I hang up with him, and I'm like, now what? I don't have a jersey. 
I, I, dude, when I tell you, like after you know the federal raid uh, years ago, they took everything. Yeah. There's no truth to God. So then the light hits me, and I'm like, oh my God, I got the, I got the, um, in my office. It, it wasn't hung up at the time. It was, I was like, I, the original prototype Trasher jersey with athletic knit. They made a 17 Calanti jersey, um, just to kind of show us like different versions of the jersey and this and that. And I and my, so you still had this from I still had back, it. This is like the OG, like this when was, you got the jerseys for bro, the team made, bro. Before so we Drake's signed got the OG, the triple o OG. Jersey. If you look at the jersey, they're not technically even the jerseys the team had because we ended up switching the piping on the sides. Yeah. It, it's the first Trasher jersey ever made, ever. And athletic. And I remember they contacted us because they wanted us to be our vendor for the jerseys, and we had, a, we had just busted out the logo, and they're like, we're going to send you some jersey samples. And they sent it, and they made it for me, a 17, and because that was my hockey number, and that was also the age I took the team. So I... It, so my mom had it framed for me years ago. I just never put it up in my yeah. office at the gym. And I'm like, shit, do I really want to give up my jersey? I'm like, yo, for someone like this, I'll do it. So I go, I go back to the gym that day, and you know, I'm not the the brightest uh, bulb. So I'm like, I see the frame. <laughs> Dude, this is just how it was. I took a hammer and I smashed the frame. <laughs> That's I probably smashed what I done too. Bro, I smashed the frame. Why? Then I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost cutting my hands up. I break it open. I get it out. And then I look on the back. They had those. All I had to do was simply like. Open you know, the back. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a picture frame. I'm, yeah, a, I, I'm, a, I'm a jackass, standard. bro. Yeah, I mean. I smashed the frame. So, so now I got glass all over and I have the jersey though. <laughs> so now I'm thinking to myself, that was step one. I found a jersey. Then I'm like. How like you got to remember this is this is we're not out of the woods with COVID at this time. There was yeah. still I couldn't get into camp. Like yeah. like how the hell am I gonna get this to him in a day or two? I even was looking up flights. Um, at the time I didn't have a medical thing where I could go to Canada, yeah. so I'm like, damn, I can't even go. I'm looking for people. Would you go to Toronto across, tomorrow yeah. for me? No, I can't. So I'm like, shit, what am I gonna do? I end up hitting them up again. I'm like, dude. I sent him a picture of the jersey. He's like, oh, my God, that's sick. I need that. So I ended up hooking up with his assistant, and we ended up, I had a friend of mine. I'm like, listen, can you get to Buffalo tomorrow? I'm like, please. And I didn't want to tell him why. Yeah. Cause, yeah, I'll do it. Long story short, I ended up telling him why I needed him to go. And then, of course, now I got charged for him to go. But yeah. whatever, that's another <laughs> point. So he ends up going to a casino in Buffalo. Drake sent someone from Toronto, it's right there, to Buffalo. Made the exchange, and that was it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, I remember him messaging me after, like, hey, I got the jersey. It's sick. Thank you so much. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I'll take good care of it. And I'm like, all right. And I just, I just thought he wanted the jersey. And then sure as shit, you know, he drops that album at midnight on the Friday. So technically Saturday midnight. Bro, my, my wife was with me. My son wasn't born at the time. It was just me and her. And my phone starts going off like 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 Christmas lights. I'm like, first instinct at that late at night was, did someone get hurt? Is someone dead? I was scared. I was looking. Yeah. I couldn't operate. Ames, I could not operate the phone. There were so was many it? things coming through. Oh, okay. Messages. I see just like, you know, at the top of the phone, the notification. I'm seeing Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. Oh, I was just going. Oh, okay. And dude, dude, ask my wife. It was like, I... I was like, what the, uh, what's going on? I'm, sh I'm shitting my pants. I'm like, what can I do? I'm turning the phone off, turning it back. I can't operate the phone. <laughs> so I'm like, Kim, call my mom. I was like, I'm going to have her call my mom. I'm like, did somebody, something happen? I don't yeah. know. Something's wrong. All of a sudden, my wife starts screaming. And I'm like, she's like, look at this, look at this. And she shows me, he drops the album with, and he's wearing the friggin', he's wearing the, jersey, yeah. the trasher jersey like this. That and was I was, sick. and I, dude, I just remember being like, in awe. Oh yeah, that's dude. We must have gained thirty thousand followers overnight. Wow! Like on Instagram and all that stuff. And dude, it was so crazy. I remember hitting him up. I'm like, dude, thank you. You didn't have to. And he posted it three times actually, front wow. back. Really cool thing to do. Super cool. And so with the frame, the joke was I was under the impression I was loaning the jersey to him. So I was always figuring it's coming back. Hasn't gotten to that point yet. I'm not a I'm not a giver backer type of guy, but he can keep it if he wants. But I need something in return. I need a. Now he sent me an OVO hockey jersey, 
but that's not a fair trade. So we're going to have to figure something out. Hey, but he, Drake, if you're listening to this right now, you got the OG, triple OG, Galante 17 Trashers yeah, jersey. Yeah. Maybe just wear it and come on the pod. No. You know? I feel like yeah. our paths will cross one day yeah. again. And uh, he's, <laughs> but again, I can't say enough good things about him. Yeah. Great Humble dude. guy. And listen, man, I, I can't imagine how many messages he gets. Every once in a while, he, I shoot. I, yeah. I love that he posted it. You dude, know what I mean? That's yeah, such and he didn't have to yeah. do that, man. No. I mean, real cool dude. And, and yeah. I genuinely, I genuinely, uh, I genuinely like that guy. But yeah, so I keep that frame there as a reminder. And it's funny because when kids come in, they know that as the Drake. I'm going to like put a post it and say like Drake was here. And I'm just keeping that. Because now cool, that yeah. broken frame. One always reminds me what a what an idiot I am, but also it's like <laughs> yo the, the frame itself is funny. Like even if yeah. I never got that jersey back, it's that frame story. alone is just um. Yeah, you got to keep that frame where where you know keep it. Up and in your dude, office. the funniest thing was the next day my dad calls me. He goes. Who's Drake? <laughs> 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 That's such a dad comment, eh? <laughs> he goes, uh, yeah. he calls me up. He goes, uh, AJ, let me ask you a question. Who's this Drake guy? And yeah. I just started, to, I just remember laughing and I told him and he's like, how the hell did he get the jersey? And I had to go through the whole thing with him, tell him how yeah. he got it. And, uh, he, he thought it was, he thought it was great, what man. What a story. That's unreal. He, That's it really, it really, uh, Drake. Yeah, shout out to Drake. We, we're gonna get him one day. Yeah, we're, 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 we're gonna cross paths. It's gonna happen, I agree. Uh, you I know. Agree. But uh, he, um, but I'll never forget that breaking the frame and then my dad. Who the hell is this Drake guy? <laughs> like he's the biggest Super guy cool. in, in, in in entertainment right now. You know what I mean? That's crazy. I feel like Canada's produced some legit star like Bieber between Bieber and Drake. You know, so for this generation, that's pretty crazy. Bieber and Drake coming you, out of Canada. Listen. Like, Growing up, obviously I'm in the U.S. The only, the first Canadian I ever knew was Brett the Hitman Hart from WWF. Beauty, yeah. I always thought Calgary yeah. was like the biggest city because I remember there was a big feud in WWF with Bret Hart, and I was like, "Damn, Calgary's got to be like the greatest place in the world." You know what I mean? But yeah. it's funny, like I feel like as I've gotten more into like Canadian culture, man. Shout out to Tim Hortons. Um, Dude, Toronto's got like a lot of lot of stuff going on. But Toronto's, even back, Toronto's huge. Like Toronto, I think Toronto's probably the biggest city in Canada. Toronto seems Vancouver. like the most like American style it's city. Huge, yeah. And it, like uh, when you're talking about Bret Hart, shout out to the uh, Calgary Hitman WHL yes, team. That's yes, their, that's their we team. We might right? need some jerseys. The I Calgary think that's Hitman their team, right? But it's funny, like you know, when we had that King of the Ring tournament, obviously we went to Alberta, and I love Alberta. I have a soft spot for Edmonton and. Um, you know, out west, I've never been to BC, but I have a, a super soft spot for them because that's where Brad Wingfield's from. And um, But even out there, you guys got guys out there. I mean, it's just, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot up in Canada. I mean, it's maybe you don't think that because you're from there. No one really loves where they're from. But, you know, when I started really paying attention to what goes on up there, you know, you guys got a lot going on, man. Yeah, I mean, there's not tons of people. I think there's more people in the state of California than all of Canada. That's a really? Real, that's a real stat, yeah. More people in the state of California. Well, you got more moose than anyone else. Definitely have more moose than anyone else. Definitely. And maple syrup. Yeah. And Tim maple, Hortons. Maple syrup's high end. Uh, if you don't eat, if you, okay, hey, maybe we put this one down for two minutes in the box because people, if you, if you're eating drink eating maple syrup, please get maple syrup, not the like bullshit. I mean, hey. Respect Aunt Jemima. I'll always respect yeah. Aunt Jemima. I feel really bad that they lost th their uh, logo. And yeah, she's we not lost Aunt Jemima. She's not getting the love that we she lost deserved. Aunt Jemima. You know, uh, R.I.P. But but that syrup is not sy no. real syrup. You know, like if you're using like Buttersworth, that's not syrup. Like just go buy the real stuff. You just know, like go up to good Canada. maple syrup. It's just one ingredient. Read the back. It'll say ingredients maple syrup, and that's the real deal. And uh, kind of bothers me. Yeah, I need two minutes to rant about that. We're not going to do it now, but uh, Listen, I'll get back to that. I bought, you know, the first time I went to Canada was for that King of the Ring tournament. I remember I had a layover in Toronto, which was hell on earth, by the way. But um, I weird, bought. Weird, by the way. I bought syrup at the airport in Toronto. Good move. And it exploded in my carry-on. <sighs> But it, it smelled delicious. It, it smelled different. Though. It smelled different. Yeah, it weird. was a glass. I think it, I don't know, but it, something happened. Yeah. But shout out to That's Canada. Nice. I love Canada. Uh, I hope to be back there soon, man. We, we got we got some stuff going on that we might be there sooner than later. But, yeah. uh, man, you know, kind of going back to, you know, from the Trasher doc, like types of people that saw the doc. And one of them was Barstool's own Dave Portnoy. Yeah. 
And the funniest thing about Dave Portnoy, again, growing, you know, I wasn't a huge barstool guy. Um, always knew who they were, respected them. And it's funny because a year after the doc came out, right? And it was, you know, it was big for a while. It's still to this day, I get people who just saw the documentary, right? You know what I mean? It's, it's to this day, I still get people that say, oh, I just saw it. But it was funny, like a year, a year after the doc came out, uh, I remember getting like my phone blowing up, not to the same extent as Drake, but my phone started going mm -hmm. randomly. And it was Dave Portnoy who put out a tweet or what they still call yeah, it I tweets remember, or what, what is it I now? Can't it's remember, yeah, it something about but he something, just had seen it. Or oh something. man, has anyone seen this document? And he was being legitimate. Like this documentary is insane. <laughs> it might have been in more than a year. Like it was And it's funny because, you know, right after the documentary, I end up I went on Spit and Chicklets. Shout out to the Chicklet guys. And um there with Barstool, obviously. And we even had a merch collab with Barstool. Yeah. And it was just funny because, you know. You know, when you're that big, like a Portnoy, when yeah. you saw, you know, things slip through the crack and everyone yeah. was giving them shit, you know, and, oh, and it yeah. was funny. But it's funny what comes from things like that is is then all of a sudden, you know, after he kind of discovered this documentary, <clears throat> excuse me, I remember getting a call from uh, our text from Mike Grinnell from Spit and Chicklet. Shout out uh, Grinelli. And he's like, hey, listen, the guy from Rough and Rowdy, you know, and I know what Rough and Rowdy is, um, yeah. you know, wants to talk to you. And I'm like, all right. I remember the guy, uh, Devlin, great guy. Talking Devlin's to me. a great dude. Great yeah, I guy. Love Devlin. Shout out. All Barstool guys, you know, yeah. our type of guys. Large so too. I remember um, him hitting me up and like, hey, we're having a rough and rowdy in uh, Providence. And, uh, you know, we'd love to, you know, Dave just saw the doc. He's really, he wants you to come and, you know, maybe do an appearance type of thing. And I'm thinking to myself, like, what am I going to do an appearance? You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I'm still kind of like under the impression, like nine out of 10 people don't really know who I am anyway. So I'm like, what am I going to do an appearance? So, you know, we had end up, you know, we, now we're connected here. You're in Danbury playing yeah. hockey. You won the King of the Ring tournament, the whole nine yards. I've always said you got the it factor. So I'm saying to myself, like, listen, I'll come. I don't need to do an appearance. I don't want to make it about me, but I'll tell you what, I got a guy that can take over rough and rowdy. If, and, and, and he's like, let me put you in touch with the matchmaker. Shout out Jerry Thomas. Jerry, and I'm like, Jerry, I got this guy named Diamond Hands. He's like, I love the name. I'm like, me too. I said, you got to get this guy in Providence. He, he's living here in Danbury. You don't even have to give us hotel, nothing. We'll get him there. Yeah. I promise you. Okay. Can he fight? I'm like, I think he can fight. We'll see. <laughs> And we're going to have to hit this on another pod and probably review this, but, yeah. you know, again, now you're a veteran of three rough and rowdy fights, which we'll yeah. get into depth in the future. But um, it's funny how so many things lead to to yeah. something else. I, 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 I say it all the time. The universe is a strange place. Sometimes things just come together and it's, you don't, you can't really make sense of how it happened or how everything comes together, but it does. And that's like, you know, and, and we could get this on another pod too, but like people was like, how the hell did you get into boxing? And it's funny because that's a whole nother story in itself. And I've yeah. been involved almost 13 years now. Like, yeah. Literally almost half my life That's I've been crazy. involved with boxing and I never was a boxing fan growing up and I don't even know if I really like boxing now yeah. But there's something with boxing that fits everything I've done and 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 like you said like Sometimes you're doing something. And you don't know why you're doing it and the universe will reveal it, it man and, and it's just like so many things have come from it and uh, You know, it's it's been a, it's been a ride, bro. I mean Listen, we're coming to the end of this episode, but I got to get back to what? I probably got 30 different DMs about you made a comment. You you did this to yourself, not me. <laughs> I was getting what is Amesbury talking about? Allegedly, by the way, this we're gonna do our first allegedly uh, a segment here. And again, you got to answer the bell like we talked about. You brought this up last episode about something regarding an alleged stolen police car. Can you give a little background on it? Um, again, these in all seriousness, these are all alleged stories. These are alleged. This is the first allegedly segment. And um, again, we, uh, we're we solid guys. We're not looking to, don't ask us for names. Uh, don't ask us for super specifics. Everything you hear is true, but we, we have to add a respect in our lifestyles and how we are as men. Have to omit certain details, but it doesn't take away from the plot. Again, you did this to yourself, sir. So please tell us about an alleged stolen police car. What does that even mean, Mr. Ainsbury? All right, allegedly. So let's start the story off. This didn't involve me. It didn't involve a team I had played on in the past, a city I had been in in the past to play. 
just an alleged story that happened at some point. This is kind of a cross segment. We have an allegedly cross segment and also on the road segment. So this kind of this kind of both kind of hits yeah. both. Kinda hits go, both. Go, go on. I didn't mean so, to interrupt you. So what happened was, and this is a story that you know allegedly came through you know <laughs> somebody else, not me. And uh, so, anyways, I think the team the team that allegedly was involved had just <laughs> won a championship and they're partying it up and they're all out you know, at the bar or whatever. And, and, you know, the bar's about to close. These guys are having the time of their lives. And, you know, these, these are, this is a wildcat time of hockey. You know what I mean? It's, this isn't any time recent. This is a, like a long time ago where things were a little bit rough around the edges, you know, and pro hockey was a little bit less pro, let's say. Yeah. And uh, so these guys were partying at the bar, you know, and they're like, okay, hey, bar's closing. We got to get out of here. And they're, you know, they're on their way out and they see police are scrambling all over the place and they're like what's going on like what's going on here and they see these cops are all on their radio and they're panicking they're like what the hell's happening and they're like apparently i guess a police car got stolen so they're like allegedly that, okay. allegedly yeah allegedly and they're like what the that's kind of <laughs> that's super crazy and they're like all right well whatever let's go back to our apartments or whatever and and you know keep partying we just won you know so these guys are going hard so uh they go back to their place their apartments and uh and they're you know having beers drinking it up wait you know just having a good time, partying up, right? All of a sudden, this car, <laughs> car pulls up into the driveway and starts rolling up. And these guys are freaking out. They're like, oh, no, the cops are going to bust us. Like, these guys are going to, they're kind of like, you know, what, why is there a cop car coming into What did we our, do? What yeah, did, what did we obviously, do? everybody's panicking. Like, what? well, why, you know, why are the police here, blah, blah, blah. And like you know, a police they have like uh, the whaler, or like you can yeah, the, from the inside you yeah, can talk and the, over the, the intercom yeah, it's on the side yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the whaler thing where they like, like put you. Let me yeah. see your hands, you know. So all of a sudden, this thing's rolling up, and I think they're messing with the lights and stuff too. So the guys are all freaking out, and then all of a sudden you hear, "What's up, boys?" <laughs> <laughs> And so then I guess everybody in the team's like, oh no, someone, one of our, it was one of our guys that took the car. So uh, now they're all panicking, trying to figure out what the hell are we going to do with this thing? And like, obviously they know, I would imagine there's oh, some sort of man. tracking device on this car. <laughs> Next thing you know, one of the guys on the team gets a phone call. I don't know, like from who, a police officer. I think it was a police officer or somebody involved with the police station <laughs> or something. And they're like. I don't care how you get it back. I don't care who gets it there. Get that fucking car back before someone gets arrested. And then that was the story. That was like, I guess the car got back. Nobody got brushed under the rug. Nobody heard about it. But that was the alleged story. That the night I heard, they won the title. The night that they won it all and they partied it up, partied it up. So I wonder how many guys have gotten it. And this is a pro team, alle allegedly. How, has there ever been... A guy that's won a championship and arrested on the same night. You'd have to oh, assume somewhere yeah. down the line there is. Had to be. But Had that be. that that could have been disastrous, stealing a cop car. It's a good thing that they won that night, let's just say. Because if they <sighs> didn't, maybe they don't get away with that, you know? Very good point. We you like winners I mean? in winners, the world. Winners get away with stuff. Could you imagine they lost, losing, yeah. game, you know, allegedly losing a championship and then getting arrested? I mean, Dude, uh, that'd be a tough go. It'd be a tough night. Listen, but. there's so many. And again, I... As a teenager, wasn't allowed to go on most road trips because of my mom. Shout out to my mom. Uh, probably better off. But there's so many stories, road stories that we're, we're oh, going to yeah. get into. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize the characters that that are hockey guys. And because and, uh, you guys are humble on the ice, you know, you know, the, you know, the old ad is guys supposed to put their head down when they score and act like you've been there. But you guys are. You guys are you guys are something else, man. I know from experience just watching the characters we had. So I'm looking forward to these road road stories and and not just hockey. And there's a lot of sports we're gonna touch on. Again, I'm the, sure there's some good rugby stories out there too. Listen, rugby. <laughs> shout out to rugby. Discovered something today, legitimately on the fly that you were played rugby. Shout out to rugby and uh, <laughs> listen. Uh, Talking Trash Podcast. Please like, subscribe. We got a lot coming your way. Thank you guys for the support, and uh, we'll see you next time. 